This is a leaderboard screen that you'll be able to create after watching this video. It allows you to send new scores and get current top 10 results from the web. That's correct, scores from this leaderboard are saved online using a very simple and free backend from PlayFab. If you haven't watched my previous video where I show you how to set it up in just a few minutes, pause this video and click the link in the description or the one in the corner of your screen. Now let's get to work. This is a screen we'll be working with today. Obviously, we're missing two main aspects of any table with scores. A header and the rows that will contain our data. Let's start with the header. In the hierarchy, right-click on the parent of the leaderboard, in my case leaderboard box, and select Create Empty Object. Let's set it height to 30, resize it to fill the entire width of the screen, and move it just below our main text. Then, inside of it, we'll create a text by right-clicking on the game object and selecting UI Text. Time for some text customization. I'll change its font, font size to 18, alignment to left middle, and color to white. Because this will be our place column header, I'll change its text to place, and move more to the left side. Then duplicate it, move to the right, call it name, and duplicate one more time, move to the right, and change its text to score. We now have a nice looking header for our score table. Now let's move on to the rows with data themselves. Firstly, I'll create a new empty game object that will take all possible space under the header and then, not to repeat all the steps from the beginning, I'll just duplicate our game object with header texts and set it as a child of our newly created box. Because I feel our naming gets out of control, I will quickly rename our header game object to table header, big game object to table, and newly duplicated one to simply row. Also, to avoid confusion, I'll change row text to some example data like 1, Bionicle and 35. Great! Now let's imagine we have a few rows. Aligning them one after another like I just did is a bad idea and may cause some layout mistakes. Fortunately, there is a great component that will do that for us. Click on the table, add component, search for vertical layout group, and apply it. Layout group automatically resized all elements to fill the entire height, but in our case, we'll like to disable that by unchecking that child force expand height tick. Much better. The last styling change I'll make before coding the actual leaderboard is making table header a bit more transparent and unique. Instead of changing every text transparency, we can simply add to the parent component called canvas group, and then change its alpha to something like 0.4. I'd also suggest to add a new image, change its height to 2, click on the anchor presets, and while holding Alt or Option key, select this bottom stretch option. That way, we have a nice image that after even more tweaking, can work as a nice divider. Now time to populate our table with some real data. When I run the game and click Get Leaderboard, you can see that Unity outputs a few leaderboard rows with place, player ID and score. Of course, the number of scores is dynamic, so if I click on this Send Random Score button and then get a leaderboard once more, you now have a bigger number of results. So how should we prepare our rows to make the system resizable for any number of leaderboard scores? We need to use prefabs. So prefab is basically a template that we can spawn multiple times and set different values in it. To create a new one, in project files, create a new folder called prefabs, just to keep order, and then drag row game object from hierarchy to newly created folder. You may notice that both elements turned blue, 
to indicate that they are now linked. So for example, I can now double click on this row prefab, change some of its properties, and that would be instantly reflected in the original scene. Now it's time to populate a release with some row prefabs. I'll open a prefab manager script that will all coded in PlayFab tutorial series. The method we'll be focusing on today is on leaderboard get. It gets the data from the web and presents them to the player. Currently, it only returns a console log, so let's fix that. At the very top, we'll need to add two variables. First one will be our row prefab. Type public game object row prefab. And the second one will be the place to spawn all prefabs. In our case, table game object. Type public transform rows parent. Now, this loop repeats for each returned leaderboard score, so we can use it to spawn new ones. To spawn new row, type game object, new game object equals instantiate and pass in our prefab, row prefab, and place to spawn it, so rows parent. Currently, it will spawn rows with default text, so let's fix that. First, we'll need to get all children texts. The way to do this is text square brackets texts equals new game object that get components in children type of text. That line creates an array with all three texts in the order they appear in hierarchy. So to change position, the first text object type texts index of zero that text equals item that position that to string. To get player ID, type texts index of one that text equals item dot playfab ID. And finally, to get the score, type texts index of zero that text equals item dot stat value dot to string. Actually, that should be it. Save the script. Go back to Unity, assign to our script row prefab from the assets folder and table as a rows parent. And finally, remove all existing rows in the scene. Time to test it out. Press play and then get leaderboard. As you can see, all downloaded scores are now nicely presented in the table. We have one small issue though, that when I add one more score to the table and then press the button to get the leaderboard, new rows are added instead of being replaced. That can be easily fixed. Simply in our script, just before spawning new rows, we need to remove all existing ones. To do that, type for each transform item in rows parent, open brackets, destroy item dot game object. One last thing I have noticed is that our places are numbered starting from zero, which is correct, but may be misleading for the players. To fix that, I'll simply add one to the position and put that into rounded brackets. Save the script, go to Unity and start the game. Then usual tests. Press get the bot, great looking scores, and then add a new one and get leaderboard again. This time everything works as intended. That's it. Check out other tutorial on how to code online leaderboard features. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more awesome tutorials. See you in the next one.